Ah, uh, the famous Pathfinder. Pathfinder is quite a unique tool that allows you to do some really advanced object manipulations. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. But the thing about it is that it doesn't create, let's say, primary shapes. It lets you do more sophisticated shapes and compounds of shapes. But without the knowledge of how to create a square or a circle, etc., we wouldn't be able to take advantage of all what Pathfinder has to offer. So, let's take a look at what we can achieve with this great tool. First of all, let's make it active by going to the Window menu and then selecting Pathfinder. We can, of course, use the Control shift plus f 9 shortcut. We'll be using this tool a lot, so I think it's a good idea to keep it handy. I'll drag it to the right to dock it in the right panel. Okay, so how to use this tool? Well, let's find out the best way, in practice. I'll create two rectangles. I'll use the shortcut, which is the letter M. The first rectangle I'll make red, maybe just so it's more visible. Uh, now I'll create another one and I'll make this guy maybe green. Now say we want to combine these two rectangles into one. So I'll simply select both of them, go to Pathfinder and choose the first option available here which is Unite. And just like that we created a whole new shape. Of course, we could combine more than two shapes. I'll undo the transformation and I'll create an ellipse this time. Now I'll select squares and the ellipse. I'll go to Pathfinder and choose Unite. Now I get this funky looking shape that kind of resembles wax poured onto water. Now, if you want to unite some objects but still have some flexibility in handling them, well, then you might want to try this technique. Let me undo a couple of steps. Okay, let's now select all these shapes and let's alt click the unite option in Pathfinder. So we're alt clicking. Okay, it looks exactly like the shape we created earlier, right? Well, yes, but now you can drag one of the squares out with the direct selection tool. You could change its dimensions as well, but it's a thing I just want to point out here as we'll move to transformations shortly. Now, if you change its fill color, or its stroke color, or weight of the stroke, you can see that we are affecting all of our shapes. And if you're set on how you want your shape to finally look like, you can hit this expand button right here to make it, uh, let's call it, regularly unified shape. So definitely explore this feature because you might want to use it in some of your future projects. Uniting is, I guess, the most important function of Pathfinder. And I think that the second most important is subtracting from shapes, which has a technical name of minus front and minus back. Both of these functions create new shapes by subtracting overlapping parts of objects. Let me show you how it works. I'll clean up the artboard first. Okay, this time I'll create an ellipse and make it yellow. I'll also create a square and make it blue. Now, because the square was created as the last object, it sits on top of the circle, which was created first. And it's important to know that to fully understand the minus front command. I'll select both the ellipse and the square and go to minus front in the Pathfinder tool. Now watch what happens. We got a new shape, which is a result of subtracting the top object from the bottom one, and now the ellipse looks kind of like Pac-Man. Let me undo that and repeat it. So make sure both shapes are selected and hit minus front. Now let's use the minus back. I'll undo the last transformation. Again, with both shapes selected, I'll click this icon here to the far right of the Pathfinder window, which says minus back. 
and the shape we got as a result of the transformation is completely different to the previous result because now we were subtracting with the ellipse. You want to see it again? Okay, undo one step and go to minus back. The last command I'd like to share with you at this moment and to tell you the truth probably the last you will use in the logo design process is the divide function. It can come really handy when we got some complicated shapes that we wish to divide into smaller pieces to give them different colors or dimensions. The most common example of how divide works is this shape right here. This basically is an ellipse with a converted top anchor point and rotated and copied a few times. We will learn how to create this shape in a future video. For now I just want you to get to know the dividing technique. Let me select all of these shapes. And even now you can get some basic idea what is going to be the result of the transformation. I mean, thanks to these intersecting lines, we can see how many shapes we'll get with one simple click of a mouse. Now I'll click Divide right here. And just like that, we get lots of different shapes that we can talk to individually uh, when we select them with the direct selection tool, because as default, this whole new shape is a group. So, if I use direct selection tool and shift click on all, uh, all these outer shapes, I can now change the fill color or stroke to any color I like. I can later do the same with the inner shapes. So if I shift click them, I can change their color just like so. Okay, so just imagine what kind of funky shapes you can get with a simple click of a mouse. That is of course when you click divide in the pathfinder. Okay, so this wraps it up for our pathfinder lessons. Of course there is more to this tool, but for now, and for logo design, as I mentioned, these are the basic options of Pathfinder that might come in handy in your next design project. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at one of Illustrator's most powerful tools and my favorite next to the control panel, which is the Appearance Palette.